I think that all fly fishermen, or at least saltwater fly fishermen, have heard the term, if it ain't char chartreuse, it ain't no use. Well, we're going to kind of cover that. I'm going to do an EP deceiver this evening that's um, all chartreuse. And chartreuse is kind of a funny color. Um, some people call green chartreuse chartreuse, and some people call yellow chartreuse chartreuse. I'm kind of on the fence, but uh, I kind of lean toward the green chartreuse as being what I consider chartreuse. Um, since this is an EP fly, I've worked with a couple of the different colors of chartreuse and come up with this particular pattern. Actually, the underside of this pattern, the belly portion, is out of a color called Pilchard. Um, which is one of the 3D uh, Enrico fibers and the back itself is actually out of the old plain Jane chartreuse uh, the non 3D I think that the two of those work together really well uh, for a little bit of contrast I found that uh, mixing the other chartreuses didn't seem to contrast enough you couldn't really see the difference between the belly and the, and the body. Now the sparkle that I'm going to use, the flash and the fly, uh, this is a pearl green color that uh, I'm going to use for the belly side. And EP Sparkle comes in uh, a couple of different colors of chartreuse. This is a, uh, the fluorescent chartreuse sparkle. Um, that's the one that I'm going to end up using, but there's also a, another sparkle uh, which is just chartreuse. I like this one, but I like to mix this one more with olives than with the chartreuse. It's got a little bit more of a gold tone to it. I think the only difference is it's on a metalized uh, flash material rather than on a pearl flash material. Anyway. This is what the ending fly is going to end up looking like. Um, it's, a, it's a nice pattern. And you've all seen me tie a very similar pattern. Um, and the steps aren't, aren't any different for this one. I'm using Chartreuse Fly Master. Uh, this is a 6 odd size. Um, and we're going to use uh, seven millimeter uh, eyes for this one. It's actually the Jurassic eyes. Okay, let's run through this. Oh, the hook is a, uh, again, it's a, a VMC 7106 size one eye. Uh, I realize that nobody can get this. I'm probably going to end up selling these hooks on the uh, on my website. Uh, the best substitute would probably be the Gamakatsu SL12S. Um, like that hook. Don't like the SC15 um, in anything smaller than like 2 odd. Anyway, so we're going to start off with the Pilchard color. We're, we've tied all the way back to the back. And I'm going to take a full length of this Pilchard color and divide it in half. And, the length in half. And we're going to tie this in on top of the hook. And I want it to line up like this, not like this. Now we've gone through this before. I want it to stack high rather than give me width for the tail. Okay, we got our first color on. We're going to put some of that pearl sparkle, pearl green sparkle in. Okay, we got that tied in. Just below that, we're going to tie in some red silky fibers. This is for the gill. And I'm going to move up to about a third of the way through the hook. 
trim that off. Okay, we're going back to the pilchard color again. This is on the belly side. I'm going to be that over and bring it up to the hook. Now we're going to bring it in this way, not like this, to give the, the width. I'm going to tie that down. And again, we're going to bring in a little bit of that pearl green sparkle. And by the way, all three of these colors of Enrico Sparkle, I, I do like. Uh, some of Enrico's uh, sparkles aren't really all that great. Um, not the color themselves. I like the colors. It's just the materials themselves tend to be a little bit um, chewed up. Um, these, uh, this particular pearl green, the strands are long is what I'm speaking of. Um, some of the Enrico sparkles tend to be chopped up to the point where, you know, it make better dubbing than it would for tying these flies. Um, just my opinion. Okay, we've got the two sets of the uh, pilcher color on. I'm going to bring in that green chartreuse the standard green chartreuse for the back. This is on that middle step, middle stage on the hook. And I'm again bringing it in this way, not like this. I want the width. Okay. I'm going to thread for Oh, actually, almost forgot my fluorescent chartreuse sparkle. And again, this is the front step. I'm up at the hook eye. I'm going to put in another load of the green chartreuse in the front. And another bunch of the fluorescent chartreuse sparkle. And then the Final step on the belly, one more bunch of the uh, pilchard color. Again, veining it in like this, I'm trying to build the bulk. And again, the Pearl green sparkle. Probably a little too much this time. Bring it on both sides. And we got that wrapped in. Okay, I'm going to finish my head. And I'm going to whip finish. Excuse me. stroke back and I'm going to trim the, the long links. Okay, this is where we're at now. The next step, I'm going to do this down below on the bench, is we're going to take my poodle brush and we're going to brush this thing square. Set this vise down. You 
you can see how that poodle brush fluffs it up gets everything nice and lined up and straight now I'm gonna try to cut this from this point right here at the back which is the pilcher color and I'm gonna end up down here at the uh, just under or right behind the gape of the hook you gotta use long scissors for this I don't have any particularly fancy scissors they do have uh, titanium edge you know coated but I don't think they were 12 15 bucks something like that okay I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna kind of curl down toward that and we've got our, our belly you see a nice bend and next since it's a, a little bigger profile I'm gonna aim to about this point as my high point and I'm gonna cut this fairly square from again the, the where the chartreuse meets the pilchard color I'm just gonna kinda of cut that up so it's a little square okay at this point I kinda of stroke them back a little bit and I do a little bit of rounding off on top and I go back through and round off my belly and we end up with a pretty good looking profile now the final steps is just gluing on the eyes um, I'm not going to go through that other than to say you know I'm using Jurassic eyes these are seven millimeter um, seven millimeter matches this hook size quite well this size bait um, the other thing that I was going to tell you is I glue them on you can see where I have tied in my silky fibers the red silky fibers I tie or I glue the, the eyes right about there right where the hook starts to bend over um, kinda covers a little bit of the silky fiber but it's a good placement for the eye it's not too far forward and the glue I use is um, this is uh, called uh, Fletch Tight it's actually for fletching arrows you know I have a little bottle here that I'm going to end up using but um, Fletch Tight is great because of this nozzle the nozzle end actually I'll show you on this the nozzle end on this is great because you can get right down and kind of work it right into the fibers uh, has the consistency of modeling cement maybe a little little thicker than that um, like this stuff been using it for a long time dries in pretty quick 20 minutes maybe uh, you could probably fish it within an hour uh, but by working this all the way down into the fibers and right down to the hook shank the eyes tend to stay on really really well um, and do both sides at one time uh, I found a long time ago that if I did one side on all my flies at once and then did the other side all at once they didn't stick as well but if you make that sandwich of, of damp glue between the two eyes and kind of push them down into the uh, the fibers and down to the shank of the hook uh, it tends to hold on really really well anyway like I say this is the finished product and I'm calling this one if it ain't chartreuse thanks <laughs>